Hey guys, this week we're going to be installing a new hatch in our kayak. Stick around. Hello and welcome to this week's edition of BS with AJ. As I said before, this week we're going to be installing a new hatch on our kayak. Now the reason we're doing this is because the storage that comes with it on the nose of the kayak is like maybe two inches deep or something like that. You can't really fit much in there, so it's kind of useless to me. That and the cap that sets over it is not watertight, so anything you put in there is not going to be dry. There's no way. But anyway, so we're going to be installing a new hatch in it that's going to open up to the whole nose of the kayak, so I can put a lot more storage inside of there because me and my wife's been talking about doing some kayak camping, so we need as much storage as possible, of course. So I'm going to be showing you how to install that, so if you enjoy videos like this, be sure to like, share, and subscribe, and consider supporting BS with AJ on Patreon so we can do bigger, better projects for you guys. Let's go ahead and get started. Alright guys, so today we're going to be doing a modification to my kayak. It is a Pelican Mustang 100X. So basically it's a 10 foot kayak. Uh, it's got a little bit of storage there in the back, but it's not dry storage or anything. It's just, you know, I usually put a cooler back there or my tackle box, depending on what we're doing. If we're kayaking a lot, I'll put a cooler. And if I'm just out fishing, I'll normally just put a tackle box back there. But it's also got the rod holders and stuff. But today we're going to be focusing on storage for the front up here. Me and my wife plan on doing some kayak camping. Uh, we found this pretty neat place that we could go a pretty long distance and maybe do an overnight camp out. So we don't need a lot of gear, but I can't really fit much of anything in the kayak as it sets right now. Let me show you the front storage that I've got here. So basically, it's got this little bungee cord that holds this lid down, but... There's not a seal or anything on there, so it doesn't keep water out. And this is only about four inches deep. So the problem I've had, I can't really store anything in there right now. Even one, there's not enough space. But two, it actually gets water in there. A lot of the places that we launch in, you have to get at a little bit of an angle so the front end of your kayak kind of goes into the water a little bit. But uh, it just kind of fills it up with water, of course. So there's no seal on that, which is a problem. But also, you can't really fit anything in there. It's not deep enough or big enough to fit much of anything. Maybe some rope and that's about it. So today we're going to be installing a storage hatch. A storage hatch, I apologize. Here it is right here. I'll be able, I'll make sure and put the link in the description below to uh, show you, to get you this exact one. It came with a rubber gasket. It's got this little bag here. And that bag actually just comes out also. So I I'm, really don't plan on using the bag. I may leave it in there just for quick access to some stuff while I'm on the kayak. But the main thing, I want to be able to put some stuff up here in the nose of the kayak. It's not going to be in, my, in the way of my feet without having to reach all the way through here. And my wife, she has a 12-foot uh, kayak, so she's got even more room in the front of hers. But I told her I was going to test this to make sure it was really watertight before uh, we put it on hers. I don't want to mess her brand new one up. I bought this one used for my brother-in-law, so it's not that big a deal. <laughs> but uh, so basically, this is a nine-inch hatch, and it's got a lock here that'll lock this down. And it's also got this seal here on the inside. It's got the seal that comes with it to seal around the edge here. So my game plan is basically, the way I've looked at this, it just kind of sets right down into the storage that we already had. So all I'm going to have to do is cut the inner ring out here. I can even leave the one inch, or about a one inch stick that goes straight down right here. I just got to cut the, uh, the bigger spot here. I'll show you that here in just a minute. And uh, then it basically just sets right down on there. And I'm going to make sure that I have it facing towards me so I can actually get into it as I'm using the kayak. And uh, so yeah, it's, it's already flat. It's somewhat flat up here on the top here. So I'm hoping that seal's going to work pretty good. If it doesn't, then uh, I can always come back and put some silicone or some type of outdoor caulking or something like that that's really good. And I can put that on there to help seal this up. But I, like I said, I wanted to test this out on mine before I did a modification to her brand new kayak. She's literally had it for like a month or two. <laughs> so uh, let's go ahead and uh, I'll show you. I'll get you up close here on what we're going to do. Alright, so like I was saying, uh, this inner part right here. I can, run, I can run a knife along this little lip right in here, and this should set down in there just about perfectly. Let me see. Open it up so y'all can see there. It kind of it kind of sets right on that right now. So if I cut that out, this will be able to set down all the way flush. 
and then I'll be able to have access to the nose of the kayak here. I won't have to reach all the way up through there. I've actually uh, I've lost my shoes up in here before. I, I wore sandals while we were out kayaking most of the time actually. I could just take them off and push them forward. Well at one point in time they got all the way up to the nose and I had to drag it out of the water and reach all the way up through it to be able to get to it. So that's going to help eliminate little th little problems like that. And like I said, it does have that little red bag that come with it. I may end up using it. I'm not 100% sure right now. The main reason I want to do it is so I can have a little bit of access to the, to the front of this without having to reach all the way from where the seat is, basically. So we're going to be cutting this open. I'm going to be using a razor blade, honestly, because this is it's hitting the hardest plastic to cut through. I've already tested it. So I got my razor blade, I got it in the locking position, and I just kind of went into this crease right here, and it just went right through, no problem. So I can just kind of wiggle this around real slowly and cut this little lip out and have a pretty clean cut. Now you do want to do it slow because you don't want to uh, have jagged edges or anything like that. I'm going to come back through here and sand it a little bit to make sure there's no sharp edges or anything just in case of something I put in here. I don't want it to rip any bags or anything I may put in here. But yeah, so basically, let's go ahead and just cut this open. I'm going to do this in real time because honestly, it's not taking that long. Just be careful as you're doing this. You will want a sharp razor blade. I apologize if my arms are in the way. Or my head may be actually in the way, I don't know. <laughs> Alright. So we've got it cut out. It's really easy to cut. I've watched a video before where this guy had uh, used a some type of uh, electric saw, basically, he was using. Uh, Honestly, like I said, I wanted to try the knife because one, this is going to make a cleaner cut and it definitely did. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and hit it with a little bit of sandpaper just to get those edges gone. But that already, I mean, it sits down in there really well. We've already got that seal set on there. It's going to sit down just like that. And uh, the only thing I'm a little worried about is the seal is right here. It's already got the holes for the screws and everything. So in theory, whenever you put pressure down here, it shouldn't have any water get up here. But this inner seal is right here. So it's going to seal the hole itself, but it won't seal around the screws. Now I'm going to test it just like it came. It just came with regular stainless steel uh, screws. And I'm going to test it just like it came to see how waterproof it is. And if it's not to my liking, basically I'm going to order some well nuts, which I can, show, I can put a link down in the description below about those. They're really easy to mess with. Basically you just drill a hole and you stick this well nut through it and it's got rubber on the top part of it and it's got the actual nut on the inside and you just put your screw down through it and it seals the hole up. So I may end up doing that if these screws end up leaking or something like that. I don't think it's going to be that big a deal but we'll definitely give it a try. Alright guys, so we've got our hole cut out here. Our hatch fits real nice in there now. So uh, basically what we're going to do now is we're going to uh, we're going to figure out where we want it and I'm going to have mine setting just like this so that way the hatch opens up this way and I can reach into here. And I can do all that from the actual kayak if I wanted to or whenever we're on shore. So there's two ways that I can go about doing this. Either I can go, there's a couple different ways actually. Uh, I can go ahead and mark and drill and screw these right here and then open it up and then just go from there or I can uh, I can use the seal itself here now on this if you're using it this way you need to be careful which way you've got it oriented so basically there's a wider gap here and right here this right here these two on the inside of these wider gaps here that's where your hinge is so directly across 
would be the center of the uh, opening part of your hatch. So this right here is what I mean. So it's the center of right here. So if you're trying to have it line up perfectly center, you want to make sure and center it there. I'm going to go ahead and do it this way because this does kind of round over a little bit and I want to make sure all these screws are on the flat part of this. Just to get the best seal possible basically. So I'm going to line it up and then I've got a sharpie that I'm going to be using. I can kind of feel where the edge is here to make sure it's pretty well centered. I like that pretty good. That looks pretty close. So without moving it, I'm going to come through here and put a hole, I mean put a mark right in the center of each hole. Alright, I've got all those marks so I can go ahead and move this seal. And you'll see that they're all fairly close to the outside of this here. I can probably adjust it a little bit to this side just slightly, but otherwise it's going to be pretty close. So I'm going to go ahead and take a, uh, a real small drill bit. I'm going to go with actually a 332nd just to make sure that these uh, screws have a place to grip real good. All right, so now I've got it in a, I've got it on low speed here, and I'm just going to go ahead and drill all these holes. All right, we've got all of our holes drilled now. Now before I actually install this, now that I've got all this stuff lined up, I'm going to go ahead and like I said before, get some sandpaper and run along the inside edge here to make sure there's no sharp edges. Alright, i got a piece of 120 sandpaper. I'm just going to kind of go over these edges real quick just to make sure there's not a sharp edge on it. That feels pretty smooth around there. All right, so we've got all our holes pre-drilled now. So what we're going to do is go ahead and uh, we're going to take our seal. And I've got these two little ribs sticking up. I believe that's the way it needs to go, but this didn't come with any instructions at all. So uh, we're going to go ahead and line them up, starting with the back part of it here, which should line up the rest of them. Pretty good, yep. And we're just going to line up those in the center here, and I'm going to grab the screws that came with it here. Alright, so I'm going to be doing this to start it with an, uh, with an impact. You don't have to have an impact, you can do this all by hand if you'd rather. I'm also not going to tighten these down all the way. I never like tightening anything down when it's especially in a circle like this until I have all of the uh, all of the screws in place. That way it doesn't get in a bind. Right, that's pretty close. Lift this up. All right, now that I've got those two in the front here, because I can't see them, that's why I put two of them real close together here. So we're gonna go on the opposite side here, say about right here. Like I said, I'm not tightening them down all the way, I'm just getting them in there. We'll go directly across to this one. You can kind of do this in like a star pattern like you would when you're putting lug nuts on. Main thing is you're trying to keep this from getting in a bind. If it's in a bind then it's going to 
possibly leak. There's a higher chance that it's going to leak, basically. All right, guys, so I've got all these in place now. I didn't tighten them down like I said a minute ago. I'm going to go ahead and tighten them down by hand using just a Phillips screwdriver because since we're screwing them into plastic, you can over tighten them very easily and strip them out. So we don't want this to leak at all, so we're going to do it by hand because you can feel when you're getting it tight, easier by hand. So we're going to go ahead and uh, we'll start over here. And just like when you're putting lug nuts on, once I've tightened them down pretty good, I'm going to go ahead and come back and tighten them just a little bit more all the way around to make sure they're all good and snug. That one right here may have stripped a little bit, so that one out of all of them, it's not too awful bad. But that's essentially how it is. That locks it in place so it won't open. That'll unlock it. We can take our bag and put it in here. It's got a little string here. It was tied to one of these holes right here. Uh, I guess so that way it won't fall through or whatever. I mean, it'll set just like that if you wanted to use that. And now I can reach all the way up into here. So that'll be very helpful. All right, guys, so to go ahead and get this out of your way because it doesn't really fit over this very well. I mean, I guess you could leave it on there. Pretend it's extra support, but it's really not. It doesn't go all the way around. <laughs> all right, so this bungee cord down here, let me see if I can pull it out to the side here. So it's got this little piece right here. So to fit it through the hole, you're just going to straighten it out, pull it right through. Do that from the inside here. Just like that. So whenever you go to pull on it, it actually locks it into place like this. But if you need to pull it out of the hole, you'd have to straighten it up on the inside and pull it right out. And now all we're going to do is run this through here. And now that's out of your way. We'll go ahead and put that back onto here. Just like that. And we've still got our bungee strap there if we wanted to put something else onto that. Alright guys, we now have our hatch installed. I've decided to do the testing in a separate video to keep this video from running on really, really long. So uh, anyway, if you enjoyed this week's video, be sure to like, share, and subscribe, and consider supporting BS with AJ on Patreon so we can do bigger and better projects for you guys. And I'll see you next week.